just hope that this day finds you in good health. We say greetings to everyone. We're talking about the final analysis, the final analysis of life. That's what we're dealing with. So much is going on. Sometimes we have to just stop and look and take surveillance on life to make sure we're on the right road and on the right path. Our focus scripture is going to be taken from Job 14. A man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And full of trouble. That's where we want to start today. And we just pray, pray and trust that all is well. All right, we're going to move right along. We just honor those of you that has joined in with us. And we just hope that everything is well as we go into the word. Uh, we are in exciting times now. These are some very, very exciting times. A man that is born of a woman is of a few days. And those days are full of trouble. Our next verse that we want to look at is coming from Ecclesiastes. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You know, we're living life so rapidly and so quickly. Time is passing so much faster and quicker than what you could imagine. Things are happening so fast until it's mind boggling. A child is born into the world and then rapidly things begin to take place and begin to play out. And uh, we don't really know the outcome if we're not in the word of God. If you're not really rooted and grounded in his word, you don't know what your outcome is gonna be. So you have to live life as it come. You know, this is a powerful thing that we're dealing with. And um, sometimes we have to look at it for what it is. Um, life is so quick. We have to be conscientious of what's going on. That's a child that we see in the background and we're just gonna allow her to just sit there for a minute as we go through our thoughts. What is going to be the outcome of your life? You know, things are, are happening so quickly and uh, you don't know what may uh, turn around or what may transpire. Days are happening so fast. When you look up, the day is in and it's out. I mean, things are happening so quickly. You're aging right before your eyes. You don't even pay attention to it. You know, until you one day look in the mirror and you see how the years have passed. Well, this is how life is. This is why we must take surveillance on our life and do the things that's going to promote life. Do the thing that the Most High is uh, demanding and telling us to do. Uh, then one scripture that we got says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So things are happening so quickly and your soul is at stake. Your soul is the most valuable thing that you own. Nothing can replace your soul. So we must Think about this as we go through our daily tasks, as we uh, cross paths with people that you may not like or you may envy or that you may think that it's not on the same page as you. You got to learn how to treat uh, individuals because life is short. We're going to look at our focus scripture coming from Job. Job is a powerful book because it has a lot of things that uh, we 
uh, don't understand that it's disclosed in the scripture. Mainly this verse, this is one of my favorite verses. I, I uh, pull this particular scripture at a lot of funerals that I preach. That a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and they are full of trouble. Now we see the young lady that's been uh, paying attention or in the background of our lesson today. She's been watching and look how quickly things are, are passing by for her. You know, this is a time lapse of life. And she's aging right before our eyes. This is how life is because the Bible says a day with, with the Lord is as of a thousand years. And a thousand years is just like one day. So time is passing so rapidly and so quickly until you don't even have an idea. So a man that is born of a woman is of a few days and those days are full of trouble. Then the scripture says he cometh forth like a flower. You saw this young girl. She's no longer a young girl anymore. She's aged quite rapidly. Comes forth as a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. So this gives us an overview of where we all are headed, whether you like it or not. That's why we must uh, use our time wisely and make sure that we're doing the will of the Most High during these years that He has given us. Time is so quick, it changed so rapidly. The next verse says, and doth thou open thine eyes upon such an one, and bringeth me into judgment with thee? So we have to understand that we got to pay attention to what's going on. We definitely got to be cognizant of the hour and of the time that we're living in. Because before you know it, your time is going to be up. And my question to you, my friend, is have you done what needs to be done in order to sustain your place in the kingdom because nothing else matters like the kingdom or the time that you spend in eternity. Nothing is going to matter over and beyond that. We have to make sure that we're on the right page as far as obeying the word of God. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? That's a good question because once something is dirty, you can't change it. You can't change a, a thing. If it's, if it's filthy, if it's dirty, the only one that can change it is the Most High. He is the only one that can come in and, and rearrange our life and reposition our life and make it to where it's acceptable in His sight. So we, we must... Pay attention to this. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? No one. You can't change your life on your own. You need him to change it. All right, let's continue on. Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou has appointed his bounds. He cannot pass. So there are certain boundaries that you cannot come out of. It's already chosen for you where you're going to reside, where you're going to live. It's already predetermined where the Most High is going to allow you to be born. So we can't uh, determine that you don't have any say-so of where you are born or who your mother is or who your father is. You don't have anything to do with that. It's a done deal before you even get here. So we want to look at things. We're, we're coming to the end of this year. We're at the end of 2020. And look how rapidly it passed by. It just shot by so quickly. Uh, it just, um, it's almost like, hey, been a two, three weeks ago. And we're looking at the last week in this year. This is the last week in 2020. Uh, after this, you know, we're going to turn over, according to the Gregorian calendar, we're going to turn over into 2020, uh, 2021 rather. So things are, are happening so quickly. 
All right, let's go back into the word. Uh, verse number six. And it says, Turn from him, he that may rest, till he shall accomplish as a hireling his day. So we've got to meet out what we're going to do in each day, how we're going to spend each day, how, how it's going to be determined, how things are going to play out. We've got to uh, measure this thing out and, and make sure that we make the right choices. Verse number seven, for there is hope of a tree. It could be cut down that it sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. So uh, Job is, is in a deep situation. He's uh, departing and expressing things that, that a lot of us probably are wondering about. He said, if a man die, shall he live again? Verse 8, though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud, and will bring forth bowls like a plant. So we see that there is something that we must consider in life. We got to consider that uh, this life is not over when it's over. Just like that tree. Sometimes you cut a tree, cut it down, and it still have life under the bottom. Uh, when the seasons change, the grass turns brown or stops growing or whatever, the leaves fall off the tree. But when springtime comes around, what happens? You start to get buds again. So this life that we have is not over with when it's over. So we have to make the right choices while we're here. And since we see so much going on all of the, these calamities all of this trouble that's going on with with the um the covid you know the people dying every time you look around folks dying i believe that there's something we can do to take care of ourselves over and, and above just a, a mere vaccination because we see a lot of people getting vaccinated vaccinated still having problems so there's some things we need to do on on our own we need to uh make sure that we Get the proper rest whenever the sun comes up. Get out in the sun because we're people that need a little bit more sun than others because um, it's not absorbed. The vitamin D, it, it, you know, in our bodies, are uh, we, we're deficient in that area. So and that's a very important vitamin or hormone that we need. So we, we, we need to really uh, be concerned about this thing because things are changing daily. All right? Verse number 10, but man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? It is said that when a man dies, he loses a little weight, you know, as, as if the soul has a, a certain measurement of weight in it. So uh, as, as we proceed and get ready to go into 2021, we need to count up the costs and make sure that we enter into this next year that we proceed with caution to make sure that we uh, have our perspectives in order. Make sure that we are looking uh, through everything clearly and not stumbling along the way. All right, let's continue on. Verse number 11 in the book of Job and then it says as the water frail fell from the seas the flood decayeth and dryeth up so uh, you know it talks about water a lot and we see in the scripture the Bible says in the beginning uh, the, the, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So water is very important. Without water, there is no life. So uh, we find Job keep talking about water. As the waters fell from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up. So man lieth down and rises not, till the heavens be no more. 
they shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. So uh, we have to consider these things. And there is no safer place for us than in the word of the Most High. Verse number 13. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint a set time and remember me, how many of you all want the most high to remember you? I know I do. I definitely want him to remember me. I, that's why we have to make sure the things that we do. The Bible says that once is appointed a man to die, but after death come the judgment. Now, we're not looking to get up out of here, leave out of here or anything, but we want to make sure that while we're in the dressing room, while we are in a position to take care of some things, that we'll take care of these things. Uh, and won't be so concerned with having a good time and having a party because it looks like the world is taking care of that for us. We don't have to worry about trying to have too much of a good time. Uh, uh, this coming year, we don't know what's getting ready to happen. You know, they, they're talking about this um, new strand of this sickness is, is spreading around. But you can't live in fear either. You got to occupy till he come. You got to continue to do the things that he is looking at, that he is promoting. Not the things that you want to do on your own. You got to start making sure that your life is in order. All right? Verse number 14. If a man die, there it is. That's the scripture that I wanted. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change come. So uh, you can try to run from it or try to get away from it. But one day you're going to have to face up to this thing. You're going to have to realize that we have to give an account of this time. This, I believe that I look at it as a point of life has been loaned to us. The Most High loaned us our life and then he's coming back to get our pay to make sure that we've done with it what we should have done with it. So if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time I will wait till my change come. Thou shalt call, thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to work of thine hands. So sometimes, you know, I notice sometimes when people you know, at the end of their road, they, they got all kind of dreams that they want to fulfill. They want to do all kind of things. Well, the time to do a lot of things is now while you got the life, while blood is running through your veins, while you're healthy, while you're able. Take care and do whatever you can do now. Don't wait till you get to the end. Now you want to try to do everything. Now you want to get saved. Now you want to love everybody. You want to love that family member that you wouldn't even talk to uh, when you come to the end. Well, take care of all that stuff now. Start this uh, the, your days off when you wake up in the morning. Uh, uh, count it as a whole new life that you're waking up to and start living it the way that you want to live it, the way that you want to live it, the way down on the inside that you've been running from and saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to take care of this, I'm going to get better, I'm going to pray more, I'm going to fast more, I'm going to read my Bible more, I I'm going I'm to love my family more, I'm going to do all, all these things that you've been procrastinating and haven't done. Well, tomorrow is another day. Wake up. And start to try to do all those things. Because we don't know. We don't know the outcome. Alright. Thou shalt call. I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to work. Of thine hands. For now thou numberest. My steps. Dost thou not watch over my sin. Yeah he knows all of our sins. He knows the good. That, that you've done and the bad that you've done. My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou sowest up mine iniquity. So, in other words, the Most High got all the, the iniquity and transgressions in a, in a secret place. He knows all of them. He knows the ones that you prayed and had covered and blotted out, like the prayer that David prayed. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew in me a right spirit. 
restore in me the joy of thy salvation. And please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. So he knows the things that, that you prayed and had uh, uh, covering and the word of blood blotted it out. He knows how many times you repented. So the scripture says, my transgre transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou sowest up my iniquity. And surely the mountain fallen cometh to naught, and the rock is removed out of his place. So we got a lot of things that's happening in the world. Floods are happening, and earthquakes are happening, mudslides are happening. But when it's all said and done, we're going to have to stand before the Most High. This is what he gave me today. Uh, so uh, we, we have to give what he give us sometime. I have an idea of what I'm going to talk about. And by the time I start trying to put it together, the Lord moved me to something totally different. So I have to speak his word. And, and I believe this is a good time to take surveillance and and look back over your life and see where you can make it better. All right? Verse number 19. The waters were the stones. Now that's pretty powerful. There that water is again. The waters were the stone. Let's talk about that. Have you ever had a faucet in your home that dripped? It just You couldn't fix it. It just kept dripping, drip. Drip, drip. Well, if you take a notice, if it drips long enough, just that little drop of water has the capability of wearing out the porcelain in the tub or the face bowl, the zinc, whatever it is. If you have, you know, we used to have porcelain uh, bathtubs and porcelain face bowls, and it would be metal under the bottom. And when that drip of water kept dripping and dripping and dripping, it would wear the porcelain, the hard, tough porcelain, it would wear it away. The scripture said in verse 19, the waters were the stones. Thou washest away the things that grow out of the dust of the earth, and thou destroyest the hope of man. So we see that a lot of things have been planned and perpetrated for this last hour you know that we have the powers that be i believe that uh, they want to create a world of their own uh, desire they want the world to be the way they want it to be i believe that's what we're dealing with right now they they're trying to create a world and control everything and fit everything into their puzzle and they have a, a strategic plan that I believe was, was given to them by Satan, by the enemy. It come from that tree, the apple. I don't know, well, I don't want to say apple. I don't, know what, I don't know what kind of fruit it was. But I believe it comes from that tree. When they ate from that tree, all of the knowledge was in that tree. And I believe this is what it has come to. You can imagine the plan that these people have through the use of technology far beyond your wildest imagination. Uh, it's it's uh, planned out to the letter, to the T, of how they want this thing to play, play out. But we cannot forget the Most High. He, he's the one that's going to have the final say. He's going to be the one that uh, comes in and knock everything over. And we've had some terrible times in our lifetime. This is where we started at. You know, uh, when we came to this country, that is. Uh, we was knocked down off of our uh, high horse because we were the most prosperous people in the world at one time when we were uh, in obedience to the, the law, statutes, and commandments, and we did what the Most High had told us to do when he uh, freed us from Egypt. And uh, he placed us in a position where we was above uh, mostly everybody. Ah, but then this is how we ended up. Then we went on to this. We sold on the, the, the auction block. 
you know, you can't you can't uh, forget these things because this is how you tell who you are. I don't believe that there, there was anybody that was enslaved like we were all down through history. We have been go going through terrible times of ups and downs, mostly downs. So they ended up putting us on on the uh, auction block. We don't want to have just only this kind of life to look forward to. This, this is all we can reminisce in our lifetime. Because the Most High promised that he was going to bless us beyond all nations in the earth. Every now and then you will have someone that will pull up and excel and become a millionaire. Even after they were released from the chains, they were able to uh, improvise enough and come up uh, with enough ingenuity to obtain riches, e even in this life. But even at that, they still got to come to an end. The Bible tells us that you're going to have to come to an end. And then you have our uh, slave masters that were sitting watching all the men working while they was in the field, making sure that they took care of, of his land that he stole. He stole his land, and now he want us to take care of it. All right? Then you have uh, these individuals that uh, divided up the inheritance, divided up our father's land, divided up his people, and sent our, his people all over, and, and uh, separated families and different things like that. Well, my friend, uh, it's not over till it's over. So we got to understand that, do you want that to be the final say, your final outcome? Do you want that to, to name uh, uh, the end of your life? Your life is greater than that. It's much greater than that. So uh, I believe, let me share this with you because I'm getting ready to close shortly. I believe that our reparations will come to us through the millennial reign because we are going to be the people that are in the high places of government. If you measure up, if you live right, if you, if you have obeyed, all of what the Most High put in place, then you'll be able to sit in those seats. Uh, the 12 apostles have special seats already. They're going to judge us. And then we have the, the assignment to judge the world. So that's why the world needs to try to be trying to cleave to us because we're going to be sitting up judging them according to the Bible. I know a lot of people, they say they, those people are crazy talking like that, but they don't know the scriptures. He gave the scriptures to us. So the waters were the stones. You know, we, we have been worn down, worn all the way down. Life has beat us down. Thou washes away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth, and thou destroyest the hope of man. Our hopes was destroyed. Well, it's getting ready to turn around, and the hopes of these people that's trying to implement all these programs and different uh, um, one world governments or whatever they, their hope is going to be destroyed because the scripture says thou destroyest the hope of man uh, you know it's a wicked thing anyway so a wicked thing cannot stand in the eyes of the most high he's not going to let wickedness rule that's why I don't understand you know um, how can you get something clean like the scripture that we got can you make something clean out of something that's unclean? Can you make something good out of something that's wicked? He destroyed the hope of man. It's going to be destroyed. There's no way it's going to succeed. All right. The next verse says in Ecclesiastes. We're getting ready to come on in. We're getting ready to look at the final say. Ecclesiastes, he comes out. And the first uh, chapter and second verse says, Vanities of vanities, said the preacher. Vanities of vanities. All is vanity. That's why I, I was uh, telling you all that you cannot have your trust in this, this messed up world. Because this world is not going to bring anything to you. 
uh, you got to look for your blessings through the hope of salvation. This world is going to pass away. Everything in this earth is going to pass away. It's not in how much money you got. It's not a, in how much land you got. If you don't have the most high, if you, if you haven't obeyed and allow him to put you in the proper position, all is vanity. All is vanity. He says, vanities of vanity, says the preacher. Vanities of vanities, all is vanity. What profit a man of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? You hear that? Sometimes we go to work, go to work, make money, and then end up uh, in your old age. I don't care if you're a mega millionaire. I don't care if you're a billionaire. You're going to get old. And, and all is going to be vanity. I don't care how much property you got. I don't care if you own the whole world. We got the scripture for you that says, what is a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? So what profit a man if and of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. So after you've done all that you, you're trying to do, uh, even trying to hand your... your um, living down from generation and the cause it to be inherited by uh, your posterity on and on and on that's still not going to do it because they're going to die and they got to leave it and then eventually everybody's going to be standing in the face of the most high to give an account of the deeds done in his body that's why I don't understand why why these people uh, running to and fro and trying to make something happen that's going to be annihilated it's going to be crushed Verse number five, the sun also rises and the sun goes down and hasted it to, to place where he arose. So the sun keep this cycle going. It's been going on since creation. Coming up, come down, come up, come down. And men have come in and, and went out. Born, died, born, died. Generation after generation. Over and over and over again. So who is the person that thinks you're going to come in and change everything. You're going to come in and set up a whole new uh, outline of how you want things to go, and you think that's going to change anything? The sun going to come up on you, and it's going to set. Your obituary going to have sunrise and sunset. And if you're not rooted and grounded in the wheels and the ways of the Most High, it's going to be all vanity. Your end is not going to be uh, delightful. Verse number six, the wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to its circuits. So even the wind going round, 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 what happened? It come right back to its circuit. Just like the sun going round, round, and, and passing, and, and making all these generations coming and passing. The Bible says everybody going to be Brought before the judgment seat. You're going to have to give an account. Isn't that powerful? Where are you going to be standing? All right. Verse number seven. The rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come. Thither they return again. So all of this stuff is just cycling over and over and over. It's just a, a, a vicious cycle. That water just continue to run. It's continue to flow. It just on and on and on. Somebody have orchestrated this thing like this. Somebody is behind it. But this world don't want to give the most high his accolades. And they're going to have to pay for it. Verse number 8, all things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. In other words, you're going to always want more and more and more. I don't care how much money you get, you want some more. I don't care how many clothes you get, they get old, you want some new one. You get that brand new car, you keep it a while, it's getting old. You get rust spots in it. So it, it, it's a vicious cycle, and without the Most High, it, it's, it's just a, a vain type of lifestyle. You saw at the beginning where that woman, uh, uh, you know, that we, we showed you how she was 
you know, uh, going through the lifespan, and she aged. As time went on, she aged. And that's going to happen to everybody. Everybody's going to have to go through that that time lapse. Everybody's going to have to go through it, whether you like it or not. All right. Let's move on. The next verse. The thing that has been... It is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no thing under the sun, no new thing under the sun. So he's letting us know there's nothing new. I don't care how you look at it or how you try to, to, to say it. There is no new thing under the sun. All of this stuff that we have done have been done. All right, the next verse. Is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. I don't think so. I don't think there's anything that can be said that this is new. Everything has been done. Let's look at it again. Is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. It has been already of time of old which was before so my friend things are happening and nothing is new under the sun I don't care how you try to to change it there's nothing new under the sun all right the next verse there is no remembrance of former things neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are come with those that shall come after so when people come and people go eventually uh, people forget about them that's why m many times people they try to have a memorial they want something built to commemorate their life they want something to be erected that testifies to the things that they've done. But my friend, we have to be conscientious that life is passing so quickly. Things is happening so rapidly. The scripture have already told us and testified. Job says, a man that is born of a woman, he's of a few days. And those days are full of trouble. And you have to understand that we are dealing in the, the last days and, and we have a, a final situation that's going on. We're looking at the final outcome. We're looking at the final analysis. What's going to happen? It's not going to last forever. Because a man that is born of a woman is of a few days. And those days are full of trouble. Ecclesiastes told you, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What is that? Fear God. And do what? And keep his commandments. See, sometimes people say, oh, the commandments were well, under the law. No, there are certain commandments. We got moral law. You got moral law. We're not to live immoral, so let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So when it's all said and done, you're going to have to learn how to do these things. You're going to have to learn how to live for them, because this is the final analysis. We're going to have to face it. For what is a man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So as time persists, as time goes on, don't fool yourself. Time going to catch up with you. Sometimes you start off as a young person and uh, you're proud, you're beautiful. And you kind of get stuck on yourself. But as time goes on, things begin to change. 
If you live long enough, things will change. If you stay here long enough, things are going to change. You can't be a person to say, I don't like old people. If you like that, then your life is probably going to be miserable. Because if you don't get old, guess what? You're going to have to die early. You're going to have to die young. So to, to live a full and a happy life is a blessing. To be able to live your full life and be able to have a life that testifies of what the Most High has done in your life. You can live to where you can get that new body. That body that is glorified. My friend, we can't take a chance. We have to live our life according to the word of God. Because one day, it's going to all be over. Alright, that's all I have for you today. Shalom.